Hey guys, Mr. Backer here. Lesson 1.8 is all about combinations of functions and looking at things called composite functions. So objective number one says we're going to add, subtract, multiply, and divide functions. And then objective two, we're going to do some function composition. So the first thing we're going to start with is just some basic operations with these functions. So we can add functions together. So if we look at something like f plus g of x, what that's telling us to do is just take whatever function we have for f of x and add on whatever function we have for g of x. And then we do like combining like terms and anything like that. We can also subtract functions. So f minus g of x, again, just says take f of x and subtract off g of x this time. We can multiply functions together. We can also divide functions. When we divide functions, though, we do have to kind of think about that domain stuff a little bit because g is itself a function. So what we need to do when we're dividing is make sure that the stuff on the bottom of the fraction can't be zero because remember it's that whole calculator issue. We're not allowed to divide by zero. So we're going to have to do some restricting with our domain anytime we divide functions. So let's say we're taking a look at these two functions. f of x is going to be x squared and g of x is going to be 1 minus x. So in part a, we're asked to add these two functions together. Okay, take f plus g of x. So this is telling us we're going to take our function f of x and just add on whatever our function g of x is. So f of x is x squared, so we plug that in. And our g of x stuff is this 1 minus x. Uh, now we just look at combining like terms. But I don't see any like terms. Like this is the only x squared term. This is the only x with a first power term on it. So instead of combining like terms, what I'm going to do is just write this thing in power descending order. So the x squared is going to come first, then the x to the first power, and then that like x to the zero power or constant stuff. So when we add these things together, we get x squared minus x plus 1. Similarly, with subtracting these things, we're going to take our function f of x and we're going to subtract off our g of x function. So this time we're taking x squared and we're subtracting 1 minus x. Now I'm going to go ahead and distribute this negative through that second set of parentheses uh, just to make it addition so it's a little bit easier to look at. And again, thinking about combining like terms, there's no other x squared terms. So that comes first. Just the one x to the first powered term and then we've got an x to the zero power or a constant term on the end. Multiplying these two things together is going to work just like a distributive property. So if we're going to take our function f of x and multiply it by our function g of x, well that says we're going to take x squared and we're going to multiply it by 1 minus x. So like I said, we're just going to distribute the x squared. So we've got x squared minus x cubed. And again, rewriting this thing in power descending order, we've got negative x cubed plus x squared. Okay, now with division is where we have to worry about that domain stuff because now we're dealing with a fraction. So if we're going to take our function f of x and divide it by our function g of x. So f of x on top is x squared. On bottom, that g of x function is 1 minus x. Okay, and now it looks like one of those rational function things that we talked about before. So we have to take this bottom stuff, the 1 minus x, and make sure it can't be 0. So we could add the x over to the other side, and then our domain is going to tell us that x can't be 1. Any other number can work, okay, but we can't plug 1 in because then we get 0 on the bottom of our fraction. The next operation we're going to work with is called composition of functions. Uh, and we show composition with this little circle thing. So we would read this as f composed with g of x. And what that means we're going to do is we're going to be taking our function f of x and replacing all of the x information in that original function with whatever we have for g of x. So we're taking a function and we're actually plugging it into another function. And then later on we're going to look at some domain stuff with these compositions of functions. So here's the two functions we're going to work with. f of x is going to be the square root of x and g of x is going to be x cubed minus 2. Now if we look at part A, it says we're going to do f composed with g of x. So what that means is we're going to take our function f of x and we're going to plug g of x into it. Now we know what g of x is, it's x cubed minus 2. So I could write this as f of x cubed minus 2. And that would tell me wherever I see an x in my function f, I need to replace it with x cubed minus 2. So if we look at our absolute value function, the x is inside of those absolute value brackets. So I'm going to replace the x with an x cubed minus 2. 
Looking at the next one, it's written in the opposite order, so now we're doing g composed with f of x. So what that means is we're going to take our function g this time and plug f of x into it. So rewriting this in the other notation, it'd be like g of the absolute value of x. So here's our function g. It's x cubed minus 2, but we have to replace this x with our function f, which is the absolute value of x. So now it says the absolute value of x cubed minus 2. Next one, we're back to doing that f of g stuff, but instead of looking at an x value, now we're going to plug in negative 2. Well, earlier we did f composed with g. We did that stuff up here, and we ended up with the absolute value of x cubed minus 2. But now instead of using an x value, it says replace the x with negative 2. So the absolute value of negative 2 cubed minus 2. And now we have to simplify this down. Well, negative 2 cubed is negative 8. So we've got negative 8 minus 2 inside of those absolute value brackets. And if we take negative 8 minus 2, we get the absolute value of negative 10. And we know that absolute value just makes us positive. So our answer here is 10. We're going to do a little bit more function composition, but now we're also going to talk about the domain of the composite function that we get at the end. So the two functions we're given, f of x is the square root of x, and g of x is going to be x squared plus 4. So if we do f composed with g, it says we're going to take our function f, and we're going to plug in that g of x stuff, which is x squared plus 4. So underneath the radical, replace the x with x squared plus 4. Now there's no simplifying that we can do here. We're not allowed to break this down at all because we've got addition going on between these two things underneath it. But what I do want to talk about is the domain of this function. And when we talk domain of composite functions, what we need to start off by looking at is the stuff that we plugged in. So the stuff in parentheses here. So this is our g of x function, x squared plus 4. And if we think about the domain of g of x, there's none of those calculator issues that we run into. There's no square roots, so we don't have to worry about square rooting a negative. There's no division, so we don't have to worry about dividing by 0. So the domain of this function, g of x, is going to be all real numbers. And now what we have to decide is if we were to plug in all of those real numbers to this new function we got, are they going to work? And since I see the square root over this thing, what I'm worried about is ending up with negatives in here. However, if we were to plug in a negative number for x, well, we're taking x squared. So anytime we square a negative number, it becomes positive. So there is no way at all that we're going to ever get a negative number underneath this radical, no matter what we plug in. So the domain of this one is also going to be all real numbers. Now we're going to look at the function composition in the other order and then talk about what the domain looks like there. So now we're taking our g of x function and we're going to plug in this square root of x. So when we do that, we get the square root of x squared plus 4. Now we can simplify this down a little bit. We can take this square root of x and square it. Those are going to cancel each other out and we end up with just x plus 4. Now talking about the domain, we're going to do exactly what we did last time. We have to start by looking at this inner piece that we plugged in. We've got a square root of x. Since we've got a square root on that x, we cannot plug in any negative numbers. So our domain here is going to be x's that are greater than or equal to 0. So that's kind of what we're starting with as far as our domain goes. Now if we look at this other piece, it looks like its domain is going to be all real numbers because it's just x plus 4. But we're starting with a domain of x being greater than or equal to 0. So the actual domain for this thing is x's that are greater than or equal to 0 because of this whole square root of x thing that we plugged in. So we've spent a little time doing composition of function, which meant putting two functions together to get a new function. Well, now what we're going to do is we're going to decompose some functions. So what that means is we're going to be taking a function and breaking it down into two kind of simpler functions. So we're going to do two different examples. One of them is going to be with this h of x, and then after we're done with that one, we'll take a look at j of x. So looking at h of x, we're trying to think about that function composition stuff that we were doing before. So there was some function f of x, 
and there was some function g of x that we plugged in there. So for that g of x thing, we're trying to figure out like what we were plugging in. And kind of a big clue there is we look for things that are inside of parentheses. So right away in this one, we can see that one minus x is inside of parentheses. So we're gonna count that as our inner function. That's what was being plugged in. Now, if we look at our function f of x, we're trying to figure out what did we plug this g stuff into. And I see this cube down here. So to me, I'm thinking we plugged it into an x cubed function. Now, if we look at j of x, we're going to do almost exactly the same thing. We're going to look for an inner function g of x. Okay, there's no parentheses in this one, but what I do see is a bunch of stuff underneath the radical. So that makes me think that we plugged in nine plus x. And if we think about that outer function, what did we plug the nine plus x into? Well, I see this big square root, so it makes me think of a square root of x. That is it for this video. Remember to fill out the Google form linked in the description down below, and thanks for watching.